how much electrical power is your motorcycle using and how do you test for it? Catch you inside. Revelator L. Hello, welcome to Revelator Alpha. So in this video, it's all about how much electrical power that your motorcycle is using. I'm really talking about current, the amperage uh, that it's using. There are basically two tests. The one is the total current draw. In other words, what is the motorcycle using with all its uh, motorcycle systems on and all its accessories on? And then also, what is the current output of the voltage regulator so those are two tests that you can do on any motorcycle now obviously the numbers will vary according to the motorcycle so depending on what you've got you'll have to find out what those are now for my Harley Davidson Softail I've got a Sport Glide here and it's the same for all Softails the current output for the voltage regulator should be 35 to 44 amps and I'm going to show you how you can test that the total current draw of all your motorcycle systems and all your motorcycle accessories, electrical accessories, should be no more than 3.5 amps less than the output. So in other words, let's say your current output from your voltage regulator is 40 amps and your total current amperage usage uh, is 36, uh, then that is uh, 4 amps in excess of what you're actually using. So therefore, that's absolutely fine. If let's say the amperage output from your voltage regulator was 40 amps and your usage was 37, that means you've only got three amps in excess of your total current draw. So that means either there could be a slight fault with the voltage regulator, but it's most likely to be that you've got excessive draw uh, on your motorcycle through accessories, through lighting, through uh, any handlebar accessories, that kind of thing, radios, whatever it is. So how do you test for it? Well, there are a couple of things, and this will apply to all motorcycles you need to determine what the total draw is first of all. And what you do first of all is you actually disconnect the voltage regulator from the electrical system so that the alternator via the voltage regulator is not supplying any charging power to the uh, battery. You're basically testing what is the total output from the battery. Now, bear this in mind, you must ensure that the battery is fully charged. Now watch my other video there for all the battery testing that you need to be aware of. Now for the Harley Davidson Softail, it says that you need to remove the battery, add jumper cables, and then uh, test the current draw via that way. Uh, essentially the reason is because there isn't actually enough room there to be able to use this which is one of these, uh, basically a loop meter, a clamp meter. Uh, and this can measure all sorts of things. So the link is in the description below. I got it quite cheap. This is rated from 40 to 400 amps uh, maximum. You can get these in excess of 600, 1000, but I think 400 amps is uh, suffice for what we need on this motorcycle. You might need something bigger, depending on what motorcycle you have and what the maximum current draw will ever be. Now basically what the test is that we open the jaws, we put the uh, the ground cable, the negative uh, cable from the battery uh, on there, through there, clamp it and then we measure the total amperage. And what we're going to do, we're going to run the motorcycle at 3000 RPM. The reason we run this at 3000 RPM is actually just to take it out of idle so that you're getting a consistent reading. But also when we're talking about charging systems at 3000 RPM, we know that that's getting a consistent level of charge from the alternator if the alternator voltage regulator was connected. It's the same in the draw. We know that at 3000 RPM, that's where you can actually uh, use uh, all the systems correctly and everything will be powered correctly in a normal sense. So it's basically just a datum. Okay, so for this motorcycle, I'm going to try to find a way to bypass the whole removing the battery and make the process a lot easier for you. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is actually remove the main fuse uh, on the other side of the motorcycle. Make sure you always do that if you're ever working on your bike first. The next thing I'm going to do is disconnect the negative terminal uh, off the battery, leave the battery in situ. And then I'm going to use heavy duty jumper cables uh, from the battery terminal and I'm going to also connect it up to the negative cable uh, on the motorcycle. So basically I'm just uh, extending it really. 
and then what I'm going to do is measure the current draw uh, through that cable. Right, I've just realised I need new jumper cables, look at that. Uh, but what I'm going to do for this test, I'm just going to use the, the red wire, but just assume the red wire is a negative wire. It's just a cable, a heavy duty cable at the end of the day. New jumper cables needed. Okay, so I've pulled the negative cable out. So all I'm going to do is connect the battery negative terminal uh, to the grounding uh, cable. Uh, just imagine this is the black cable of my jumper cables. There we go. Right, next thing I'm going to do is put the main fuse back in. Okay, now I'm going to give it a quick test to see if uh, that circuit is working. And it is. Now, the next thing I want to do is disconnect the output uh, cabling from the voltage regulator. On your motorcycle, it depends where your voltage regulator is, of course, but that's what you want to disconnect. Right. So, for the soft tails, uh, it's really easy. Voltage regulator is at the front of the bike. The cabling on the right-hand side, that's what we want to disconnect. Right, let's do that. Whew. Right. Voltage regulator disconnected. And you will get a bit messy. Next thing to do is get your clamp meter. Now, because it could be from 35 to 44 amps, I'm going to 400 amps on mine. Okay, so the voltage regulator is disconnected. We're gonna start up the motorcycle and I'm gonna be testing what is the current draw, the amperage through the motorcycle uh, without the battery being charged up. I'm gonna put on the lights, uh, all my lights, all my systems, and see that will be my datum now, what is the maximum. So in the future, if I add electrical accessories to the motorcycle, I can do a bench test uh, of a system and watch my video up there to see how I bench test everything before I put on on the bike and then I'll see if it'll be within limits what the voltage regulator will output and what the current system is okay now bear this in mind this is purely for the battery output there is a lot higher amperage draw in the starting phase from the starter motor so for a hundred percent crank case amperage uh, CCA it's 315 uh, amps and for 50%, it's 155 amps. So on that initial starting phase, as soon as you hit the starter bunch, there's a lot of amperage going through. I'm not testing that at this stage. This is purely the total system. Okay. Okay, so I'll adjust the camera so you can see what the amperage draw is here. And then I'll start at the bike, run it at 3000 RPM, and then uh, we'll get a good reading. Right. So what I do, I'll start up the bike, give a base level reading, and then I'll put on all my accessory lights and see what the difference is there. Okay, full disclosure here. Don't you get worried when people say full disclosure, or I'll be honest now, as if I've been lying to you the whole time. Uh, okay, the jumper leads uh, that I was using uh, yesterday, this is the next day, uh, by the way, yeah, still in smelly old clothes. Uh, basically, I couldn't get a good connection uh, between the battery and the earth. So uh, what you need to do is get jumper cables with terminal lugs on, and then you can attach it, bolt it to the battery, and then bolt the two cables together, and that will make a solid connection. I've got an old ground wire here, so it's exactly the same. I've just bolted it to the battery, and I've bolted it here to uh, the other cable, the, the negative cable. Now I've put the, the multimeter, uh, the clamp meter, in between that cable there, and I'm going to measure the current. I've disconnected the voltage regulator. We're going to fire it up see what the uh, current is and then see uh, what the total current is or amperage is. I want to put all my lights on as well. Right, let me do that. Okay, just to confirm then, I'm going to start the bike, I run it at 3000 RPM and then see what the uh, current draw is, the total current draw is. Right, let me do that. <laughs> Ah, 
Okay, so as you can see, when I started the bike, uh, the amperage or the current draw kind of settled uh, around the nine, nine and a half uh, mark, kind of went up to about 9.8, 9.9. So let's say 10 amps uh, maximum. When I put on the auxiliary lamps, uh, the current draw went up to about 12.8, 12.7, 12.8. So that's my maximum draw right now as my bike stands. Now you could add all the electrical accessories uh, that you are adding on, um, you're powering from USB as well, but essentially uh, I've got a maximum of about 12.8, 13 amps, and then add all the little accessories, you know, the 0.5s here or there. Let's say if I'm being really pessimistic, I would say about 15 amps, uh, which I'm drawing, if I was to power everything at the same time. Now bearing in mind, this voltage regulator should pump out uh, 35 to 44 amps. Uh, you can see there's a massive margin there. So it really depends on what accessories that you've got. Okay, so the next test is to actually test how much uh, output current the voltage regulator uh, is uh, producing. Right. Okay, so for the amperage output uh, test uh, from the voltage regulator, you need to trace the the connector uh, cables that are coming out of the voltage regulator and trace them back up here. And what you'll find, uh, that it's all obviously all wrapped up, you need to just cut away at the sleeving there, the outer insulation tape as it were, and expose the red positive wire. Then you're going to put your clamp meter over that red positive wire. You're going to start the bike and actually run it at 3000 RPM, but ideally what you're looking for is 13 volts across the battery. Anything more than that, and that's basically, uh, again, it's that datum, it's uh, showing exactly how much power is going into the battery, so it's not just idling. The alternator is working effectively. Remember, at low RPM, the alternator may not be uh, providing enough power uh, to overcome the draw of uh, the electrical systems from the battery. That's why you always measure these things at, let's say, 3000 RPM or anything above idle anyway. It's exactly the same here. So how do you get 13 volts? Well, basically you just get your multimeter and uh, you put positive, positive, negative, negative across the battery terminals, uh, put it on voltage, start up the bike, and then you'll see when you get 13 amps or above and note the RPM. Then all you need to do is just match that RPM. You know, that's a, an easier way of doing it. Especially if you're doing this by yourself. It's a lot easier with two people, of course. So you can have the clamp meter and the multimeter run at the same time. But if you're by yourself, then obviously this is probably a good way of doing it. Right, let's get into it. Now, of course, be very careful here because you're cutting uh, the insulation uh, tape around this wiring. Uh, but what you need to do, just feel where the cables are, just with a sort of standing knife, and then just cut it a little bit. There we go. I've just made a half a centimeter incision, as it were. I'm just going to pry this apart and then see where the wires are. There we go, I can already see where the red wire is. So I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger until I can expose it. Now you can cut at any point along here. You could do it at the voltage regulator connector end if you so wished, uh, or you could do it here. I think it's just here it's easier to access. You're not on all fours and also to demonstrate it to you guys, it's easier from here so I can put the clamp meter here. Uh, but say so that's entirely up to you where you put this incision, where you expose the red positive cable from the voltage regulator. Just make sure that it's from the voltage regulator, not somewhere else, and make sure you test it before it joins the main harness, which is a little bit further in. So around about here should be fine. Okay, so as you can see, I've uh, unwrapped the sheathing here, or the uh, the insulation tape, and uh, basically I've exposed the red wire. Now, just be very careful when you're doing this, okay? Just feel where the wires are, make a very small incision, and then try to start unwinding it. There are a couple of other small wires here, so you don't want to nick those. Now you get your clamp meter, you separate the positive wire from the rest, and you slip the positive wire through here, like so. Okay, so to achieve that 13 volts, it really depends what your bike is. So I can't give you an RPM. You just need to get a multimeter across it and that will determine what it is. Now for all the battery voltage tests, watch that video up there. Uh, that will give you everything you need to know. Also, for your information on the website, on the Harley Parley page, there is a PDF free download 
of all the electrical figures that you need to know. Now this time I'm going to set this on 400 amps max because just in case it peaks over 40 amps. Uh, and then if it's a lot less then I'll put it down to 40 amps reading so it'll be easier to read. <laughs> Okay, so that was on the 400 amp. Uh, I'm just want to verify that uh, with the 40 amp setting. So I'm going to do that again. Okay, so on initial start, I'll have to review the figures again, but on initial start, I believe it went uh, over 34 amps, 33.9, 34 amps, it could even be 35 amps. So that's within the range of the output of the voltage regulator for amperage. Then the actual running amperage was in the region of about 19 amps or something like that. So if I've got a maximum, let's say, of 12.8 with all the current systems, I know that's in excess of 3.5 amps of what I'm actually using. So for my bike, uh, I'm within, uh, within limits. Obviously, the closer those numbers get together, uh, the more of an issue that you might have. So the only thing to do now is just tape all this back up. Really, you only ever need to do this once, if at all. I'm just showing you how you would do this test. Uh, actually, a really good indication is just a voltage test, but the amperage test is a really good way of measuring what your output is and what your total consumption is. So that might determine if you get a new voltage regulator and or alternator to match what you're using. Right, let's button this up. Right, done, perfect. Let's put everything back together. So there we have it, that is your total uh, amperage output from the voltage regulator, alternator voltage regulator, and then also your uh, total consumption amperage current of all your electrical systems and uh, your accessories, whatever they are. Now obviously those figures will be totally different for your motorcycle. It really depends what your voltage regulator output is, what your battery is, what your electrical consumption is, if you've got problems with the electrical system, if you've got shorts, whatever. So bear that in mind. These are the figures that I'm finding right now for my motorcycle. One thing about these as well, now you've got to understand that the, this is just one instrument, let's say, that you're testing it with. It's probably wise if you know other people who've got one of these clamp meters to actually do the same test with theirs as well so that you can compare and contrast. This may not be 100% accurate, there may be a fault with it, uh, it might be old, whatever, it might need replacing. So actually comparing and contrasting against another clamp meter might be a good way to go. But if you're using the same one all the time, then you're kind of gauging where you're at as well. So I found it to be uh, really accurate, but obviously that's entirely up to you. I do acknowledge that some clamp meters may not be 100% accurate all the time. Uh, and also that's for all multimeters as well. So bear this in mind. So you can buy really expensive ones, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be uh, more accurate than this uh, cheaper one here, uh, which I've got. The link is in the description uh, below for this, by the way. Right, anyway, hope you found that useful. So if you're ever wondering what your current usage is and what your output is from your voltage regulator, that's how you test it. I'm not saying you'll ever need to do this, but that's it. Anyway, hope you found that useful. So don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Check out the website. Check out the Harley Parley page. I will put a free download of all the electrical figures that you need to know for the soft tails. If you've got another motorcycle, obviously that won't apply to you. But anyway, right, on to the next project. Catch you again. Ta-da. Thank you.